This week on Maker Monday, join us as we recognize a special group of ladies, Adams Public Library's very own Needles, Hooks, and Pins group. Although the group consists of a rotating cast of women, today we are featuring Vivian Lemon, Carol Malone, Treva Gerke, Ramona Harshbarger, Evie Knorr, and Barb Norby. Hi, I'm Vivian Lemon, and this, uh, this group is the Hooks, Needles, and Pins. We started out as a Come Learn How to Knit, and we had two ladies that very quickly decided they weren't coming back anymore because they would rather crochet than knit, and we said, well, why don't you come and knit, or come and crochet, and the group turned from learning to knit to Hooks, Needles, and Pins, and everybody's welcome to come and do what they want to do. I knit and I quilt and I babysit for grandson, you can probably hear. <laughs> and I'm a maker in our community. I'm Carol Malone. I live here in Decatur, Indiana. I am a quilter. I do have a long arm in my home. A long arm is a machine as big as this table. And I quilt for other people. But I also make my own quilts. I make t-shirt quilts for people. Um, I knit, I crochet. So hooks, needles, and pins, we do it all. I can show somebody how to put binding on a quilt or how to piece a quilt if they really want to learn. I especially like teaching young people, like nine-year-olds, eight-year-olds. Um, we've got the whole summer here, so I'd really like to see young people be involved. I'm a maker in Decatur, Indiana. Hi, this is Trupa Gerke, and I'm currently crocheting, but I'm also a quilter. Um, this is what I like to do, and I do sell my uh, items at the craft shows. Not, not necessarily my quilts, but a lot of the different things that I make from the scraps with my quilts. So that's how I try to use up my scraps in a useful way. So, and I'm a maker in the community. Hi, my name's Ramona and I am a crocheter and knitter. I crocheted, learned how to crochet when I was just a little itty bitty thing. Um, it's my stress reliever and um, I've been doing it many, many, many years. I love it. This is my second time here, and I'm a maker in the community. Hey, I'm Evie, and I enjoy quilting. I'm a maker in the community. Okay, I'm Barb Norby and I, I do uh, crochet and knit, but I, I like to work with the plastic. I got stuff here. This is a, a leaf. Then I got an Easter egg and candles and stockings. And then I got a, and I didn't get these done. It, they're uh, snowmen. This is the man because it's got the top on. This is a female. So you can do whatever color you want to do it. I did it in white and then outlined it in black and then put those little eyes on it. And this is my favorite, is my snowflake. I'm a maker in our community. Vivian is currently working on a gorgeous quilt that you can later see pictures of, but she also knits. She was a founding member of the Needles, Hooks, and Pins group and warmly welcomes new members to come check out the group and see what they are all about. As a third generation quilter, Treva was immersed in the crafting world from at a young age. She makes a variety of alluring creations including bowl cozies, pot holders, trivets, towel holders, and like oftentimes recycling materials from her quilts.
Ramona has obtained some of her skill learning from older generations, but a lot of what she makes her beautiful work possible is self-taught. Right now, she is working on crocheting a soft, comforting baby blanket for a dear friend's child. Evie is meticulous in her work, paying close attention to the smallest, finest details that make her pieces ex simply exquisite. Right now, she is working on a baby blanket. Barb has been enjoying plastic canvas needlepoint for well over 15 years. She finds it to be the most relaxing way to use her talents and loves the variety of colors and patterns available in this genre of crafting. Her creations are simply beautiful and unique. The skill amongst this group of women is astounding. They all got into their crafts for different reasons, but their talent is clear when looking at what they are able to accomplish and the joy they bring with their creations. I do knitted knockers and I do quilts, and I do all of them because I have no one in my family that has had breast cancer. Knitted knockers, by the way, are for yes. women who have had breast cancer and have had a mastectomy, so that when they go out, they can feel more normal. Um, so I do those just because I feel very blessed that nobody in our family has had that as an issue. And I have one friend now, don't we, Angie? We had a double mastectomy, so there's even more. There's a group in Fort Wayne that I take them to and I buy yarn for. As far as quilts, a lot of the quilts I give away, and I give them away to family and friends and teachers and people who I think have done an exemplary job with kids or with other adults. Miss the Mrs. Flash doesn't have hers yet. Don't tell her it's it's coming though. And. Uh, just because I think they've done a good job and, and we need to say thank you to them. I give a lot of my quilts away to family, friends, or people that are going through treatments. I've made some because when you're going in chemotherapy, it's nice to be covered up with mm -hmm. something warm and snuggly. Yeah. So, but it's really gratifying to give a gift to somebody. Yeah, it really is. Um, years ago, the place I worked for, the manager, his wife had cancer. She ended up passing away from it. But uh, the year, our group was really into Relay for Life. And um, as a quilter, I made squares and then everyone put sayings or some something inspirational for her on it. And then we sewed them all together in raggy shaggy style, which has, you cut along the edge and then that's just- Looks like fluffy. Fluffy, frayy, whatever you want to call it. And um, presented it to uh, Sharon and Mike at the Christmas party. And they were just floored. Mm. So it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. No. My family, I'm the only one that does crafty stuff. My brother, my sister, mom, 
nobody ever did that. And so I've been told by several people, not only family, but friends and people that I've given things to, because they never make anything for me to keep, I always give them away. And uh, they said it's cherished more with it being handmade because you put a lot of your heart and your soul into what you're making yeah. Yeah. and a lot of love. And um, when I lived in Florida, I was in a, a group and they did um, uh, like burial bags for babies that don't make it. Um, they went to a hospital. I can't remember the name of the hospital right That's now, okay. but it's not important. And um, but you make baby hats, baby blankets, the uh, the burial ones where the preemies don't make it, and, mm -hmm. or something happens and they don't make it. And it was so rewarding. I went with them one time to deliver a bunch of them, and they had a big fiasco, not a fiasco, a big celebration and a little light lunch for everybody. But uh, it just it it does my heart good. It makes me feel good by making things and giving things and seeing the people's faces when they receive them. Sometimes they don't know they're getting it, so it's an even bigger reward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Quilts of Valor, I mean, we don't call them Quilts of Valor, but the American Legion here in town usually has one or two presentations a year where they give them to Vietnam vets or anybody that has served our group in Preble um, Creative Quilters and also I think the Burn Swiss Stitchers do it mm -hmm. too. They make quilts and give them to people that have served the country. So that's a nice thing yeah. and they really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know they have a ceremony where they drape them over their shoulders and it's just really cool to be there when they present them to the mm -hmm. people that have served. Yeah. Well, I know one of the things that I did was fifth grade knitting and Karen Flesh asked me if I would do that as an enrichment program so we did it at lunch and we had 12 signs we limited it to 12 kids and yeah that was a lot and but they <laughs> you know they learned quickly and the the rewards that I saw from that were multiple things the kids learned to work together we went to Mr. Mo I went to Mr. Mosher's class to deliver some library books and the kids were struggling with a math problem and one of the girls that was in knitting said well, Mr. Mosher maybe if two or three of us work together maybe we can figure it out better and and they did he put them in group or they put themselves into groups and figured out the math problem we had one fifth grade boy who was a real handful and Mr. Mosher came to me and said would you consider doing fifth grade knitting five days a week and I said no but why and he said well when he comes back from knitting I'm guaranteed two two and a half hours of good solid behavior and work from him and he said what is it that you're doing in there and I said well he's doing a great job at knitting and it didn't take too long for the other kids to, to figure out that they could go to him and get the help when I was busy with somebody else. And I think that helped raise his self-esteem. We had two boys that signed up and all they did was sit in the corner and rewind their balls of yarn. And one of their moms called me and says, is, is it okay if they're there? And I said, oh yeah, it's fine. And she said, well, you know why they signed up, don't you? And I said, well, I have a suspicion. And she said, what's your suspicion? And I said, well, I think they signed up because your son has asthma really bad and when he has to go out at recess in the winter time his yeah, asthma yeah. flares so if he doesn't have to go outside then he doesn't have to worry about his asthma flaring so they came to knitting and the whole time we knit they sat in the corner and rolled the balls of yarn from one end to the other and back again the other way but i had to give him credit for thinking about that and both of them for behaving then yeah. but so I, you know, I don't know. I think the best quilt thing was when I made a quilt for my, our financial advisor's mom. She was going through an incident with cancer and I took it into her and she looked at the, the gift package and she says, we can't accept gifts from clients. And I said, oh, this isn't for you. This is for your mom. 
And I wrote her mom a letter and she gave it to her mom and her mom was in tears. Why would someone do this for me? Someone that doesn't even know me, why would they do that? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a major plus too, is just the people that get the stuff that we give away, it's unexpected for them. I do quilting for people and they bring the quilts to my house. They're top and usually the back. Sometimes they bring their own batting, but I can provide batting at a cost. But um, I charge to quilt people's quilts. And I don't do custom. That takes too long. I usually just do edge to edge and edge to edge means the same design goes all the way across the quilt and then you roll it in the machine and then you do another row and sometimes there's like the quilts I have in the frame right now has 12 rows rows in it <laughs> so you know it's just based on a price I yeah Carol has a computerized machine oh yeah 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 it's so. computerized so I mean not that it's real simple it no it requires takes skill. skill to learn how to mm -hmm. use it and everything um, I also make t-shirt quilts for people and on those they usually just bring me their t-shirts in a bag and I charge $25 per shirt and they get a quilt back that is three layers of fabric the t-shirts on top batting and then backing and usually I let them pick the backing that they want sometimes people like minky on the back and that's perfectly acceptable um, and then it's bound so the outside edge is all finished so just depending on how many t-shirts they have that's that's what I do and I usually graduations people want t-shirt quilts or something like that but also people um, bring me their own tops t-shirt tops that they put together and I quilt them for them so it's a quick way to finish something off if you don't want to do it yourself <laughs> so Oh, contact me. Um, I would contact by phone. Um, my phone number is area code 260-223-1403. I don't do business cards. It's just word of mouth. Um, if you call me the first time, I won't answer. Um, leave me a message and I'll call you back as soon as I get the message. Or if I'm busy, I might it might be an hour or two. And your name again is? Carol Malone, Decatur, Indiana. I live over by the middle school. Um, so. Hi, I'm Treva Gerke, and um, I'm a quilter, but I also do uh, a lot of crafts with my fall-offs from my quilting, which is scrappy stuff. Um, and I also do a few crochet I crocheted items that I also sell at the craft shows. That's my primary source where I go to sell my stuff, but I also do do a little bit of custom work for people on occasion. So, um, I'm always at the Winnegan Craft Show. That's one of my ones I always go to. It's out at the Winnegan School. That's always the first weekend in December. But I'm usually at a craft show every weekend in November, in the first two weeks of December. Um, if you're looking to do a custom quilt, per se, um, and you want a queen size one, the minimum cost is $800. I say, tell people that up front, and you usually go, <gasps> but fabrics anymore are $12 to $14 a yard. Most people don't realize that. When I started doing this in the, in the late uh, 90s, the cost on a yard of fabric was $6 a yard. So it's more than doubled since then. And your cost on everything else has gone up too. So, but it's very individualistic when I do custom work for people, which is part of the fun for me. So, and my way to contact me, if you're interested in anything custom, or I do have a page on Facebook that I post stuff on occasionally um, that's O, that's O-H-S-O-S-E-W, Fine Designs. 
Um, and you can also contact me if you really want to talk to me at 260-724-3615. And like Carol, I will probably not answer because I don't know your phone number, but leave me a message. I'll call you back. Thank <laughs> you.